Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to another show where Winning Ways is going to bring you some fantastic um, insights and information, and more importantly, in your call, we're going to be chatting to Mike de Kock, uh, who is in Dubai already, getting his horses ready for the Dubai Carnival. He'll tell you all about the horses that he's got there, and it is a most fascinating interview, as always, and our big thanks to him. So don't miss the uh, interview with Mike de Kock. That comes in your call, but... Um, are you looking a bit uh, gum? How's uh, your no, team? Fine. I think a good weekend football was. We've managed to get into the top four at last. Mm. Just by the skin of our teeth we've got in there. But we played well and we won. I think this, this Premier League is still very upside down. I was speaking to Budgie Byrne, you know, the, the leading authority on it. And uh, even he was saying uh, with the top managers getting uh, given the bullet, it's going to be interesting. And, and if you're a Man United fan, you've got to be thinking... What's going on? If you're a Liverpool fan, you've got to be thinking, what's going on? And if you're a Leicester fan, you <laughs> think, <laughs> what's going on? What's go <laughs> and James, they've got the first team to have been uh, lost at Christmas yeah. and a year later first at Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's never it's happened in the Premier League. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, I'm thrilled for the Leicester fans that Johnny Come Lately fan, Mark Dixon, he's the latest Leicester fan. Um, and to the rest of them, there are about 12, I think. There's 12, yeah. yeah 12, 12 yeah, at the last yeah. count. There's 12, 12 around the count. They did country search, but, uh, 12. They, they play some really good football, and they played Everton on a break, yeah. uh, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, tonight's game, which you'll be able to watch after you watch Winning Ways, will be um, the game of the season. Yeah, uh, it, do, it, it's, uh, it looks a likely draw. Because both both teams are uh, having so many injuries, it looks a likely draw. But it'll be a big step forward if your team Arsenal can win. Uh, yes, this is the this is the key game. The key we game. win this, uh, the league I think might be ours. Although Leicester <laughs> is looking well clear. Well Leicester clear. is looking. They looking quite tough at this stage. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone said, "Oh, now they're going into the Christmas period." Leicester. They got Everton. Then they got Man City. Then they got um, the Man United. They're going to have a hard time. Well, they disposed away from home of Everton, who are not an easy side. Not an easy side yeah. to beat, yeah. yeah. So, oh, well, that's good. The football is going to be, it's be wonderful. It's lovely run into the new year with the football. And I hope your team does well, James. You're Thank overdue. you. Thank you're overdue. you. And, um, like, I'm hoping your team does well. Yeah. You know. The yeah. rest of them, I couldn't give a damn about, and I'm hoping they all do badly. That's exactly it. Those Man United boys, you poor fish. You know, <laughs> Liverpool? Liverpool. You poor tadpoles. Poor fish. <laughs> Man United, Liverpool, and Chelsea. Well, Chelsea won yeah. without the manager. They beat who's, Sunderland. Who's going to manage Chelsea? Uh, there's talk of Pepe Guardiola at the end of the year coming in. Uh, in the interim, guys, back in again, go sitting. He'll he'll do a good job. He's a great manager, but uh, the players got to lift themselves to the floor. Nobody else, you know. They scored twice quickly and they they cock a hoop a bit, which will yeah. help them. But every game's a hard what, game. What a, what a, uh, I saw a, a placard in the stand saying that something about the uh, you, the turncoats or something. They they mentioned the three players, Hazard. Um, our, our ex boy, um, Fabregas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, and um, there was one other. They mentioned, yeah. oh, um, um, the, the, the Costa. Spick, yeah. Costa. Costa, yeah. yeah the they one they that, haven't, uh, got they no haven't been consistent. All three of them haven't been consistent. And, uh, you know, you've got, to, you've got to point fingers. The boss point, pointed fingers, called it a betrayal of his tactics. Yeah. And uh, they said they can't accept the word betrayal. He struggles with English at the best of times. <laughs> and he even said maybe the wrong word, betrayal. Well, I think the fans are really upset about this. Yeah, I would him. be too. Yeah, he's yeah. a great manager. Great. I love to. United him. could get him. If, if they said if in goal, you go back and we'll bring. Uh, go back to Holland. Uh, they'd be favourites for the league. They'd be yeah. favourites for the league, United, if they got uh, Jose Mourinho. Yeah. He's well, just he's a legend. Win. They might be favourite, but they wouldn't win it. But we've got other things more important to talk about because United is one of the things that is lowest on my list. Let's go and have a look at three to follow. Dad distorted humor. He's probably one of his best sons instead. Oh, have another wins the derby. Oh, have another in the Lilacs and lace, 48 to one upset. He's just a big, strong, leggy horse.
Right, we're going to have a look at uh, three to follow, and we're going to Gravel, a poly track, Friday night, 18th of December. I think it was the first race, 1,400 metres. You ended up winning it. But uh, take a close look at the horse that ran third, First Apostle, trained by Wendy Whitehead. She's in hot form at the moment, and uh, ridden by Alec Forbes. He g it gives him a terrible time. Let's go and pick up the race. Yeah, this is a nice horse. I look at it. It wasn't a cheap horse by King's Apostle. And when I looked at this horse, I thought, this is a nice horse. And those famous colours of, uh, I think they, Dr. Nick Labuschagne's colours that go back to Perry Perry and all that. And he, uh, a big horse, bustles his way. And Alex said, let's get this horse into the race. It bustles him. The eventual winner is my horse on its inside, who gets a clear path behind Mace's horse, Brazzaville, down the inside. But, Alex, but Alex, Alex is on this very green horse. You can see all the sky blue cap. He's just nursing it to stay in the race. If you compare him pushing to stay in the race, whereas the winner on the inside is, is on the bit. But he's grabbed the bit again, this horse. Yeah, he looked like he, he wanted to get him in and make sure that he stayed in the gap. Then he took a hold of the bit. And now he's going along quite nicely, but it's not easy. Um, Gravel under lights, polytrack, first run. You know, there's a lot of horses that have had experience. And I think this horse ran a great, great race. Forbes now brings him out um, to get a run and comes out to about three wide or four wide. And uh, here you can see he looks like he's all over the place. Yeah. He all slips through the inside. Um, the others in the front look like they've got it under control and here this horse doesn't really know what's he's going on. He's very green, he's brushing up against the horse and he's running away from the big edifice on his left and he's not confident, with it. he just doesn't know what he's doing. This is a horse that is running without a cylinder because he just doesn't know what to do. The horse comes next to him and uh, then he, he straightens up and, get, and gets third and uh, I think this horse, First Apostle, going to be a much improved horse for next time James. Well he certainly looks like he'll go on I think the second horse will win next time as well uh, Brazzaville I think you'll find that form might work out so um, we'll go from there to Kenilworth 19th of December race three maiden plate for fillies take a look at this um, uh, this was the start of a bad day for Aldo de Mayo let's go and pick up uh, what happened with leisure trip yeah, this, this horse here runs uh, for Andre Nell and, and uh, Sabine Platner. So you know the silks well, two off the left. And uh, the, the, the horse that won is called Impala Lily, and that is in the Dropkenstein Sky Blues. It's Dean Kahneman and Anthony Delpesh. That shows good speed, and that horse is uh, it made it a good day for Dropkenstein. They had a wonderful day culminating in the uh, same jurisdiction. But the horse we found, you'll see it. It'll come at the left of the you horse. You left. It's yeah. not in the picture. It's not in the picture at the moment. <laughs> Uh, there it is, just coming into the picture. It's now the, in the, the black horse next door to the sort of lighter coloured horse with the white colours. And um, this horse is beautifully bred. He's by Trippy out of Lasse Fair by Dane Hill, uh, bred by the Laplace Sons by the, their, their farm. And here he's two off the, one off the left hand side. In fact, he's right on the left hand side of the race course now. And um, she, it is, is just going like um, she's going nowhere. The yeah, she's very the... green. He gives her a slap of the left hand. The winner now, as you can see in the Dracazine Silks, is Anthony Delpeche. And this horse here, he doesn't get after her too much because she's green. No, yeah, yeah, it just gives her a little push. That's basically it, you know. She just looks like she needed a slap to get her going. Um, but she just gets a little push and flies to run up second. She's obviously got tons of ability and probably... Um, you know, needed just to smack down the shoulder, smack down the backside just to get her through to win it. Right, let's go and have a look at um, Sunday the 20th of December. And um, Maiden Juveniles out there running. Now, interesting to watch the Maiden Juveniles. And certainly this will be one of the most interesting uh, Maiden Juveniles you've ever seen. I don't know what happened to it at the start, but uh, he made a hash of it. And uh, what he did after that... Certainly yeah. worth, worth having a close Yeah, look. this is what's called Megnos that James is talking about. And uh, it's by Asiatic Boy. It's out of a Fusi Pe Pegasus mare and runs in the uh, colours of Khalifa. And when you do these four furlong scurries, you cannot get left. No, you can't get left as far as this one got left. Let's go and see why he got left. You can rerun it and have a look. But um, I, I looked like he, he was able to get away with him, but he didn't. Okay. He just walked out the bed. Yeah, he's absolutely lost now. Walked out the gate, joint lost. But Anthony's at him, get him onto his neck. The winner is down the inside called Rob's Jewel and beats a horse called 
answering Genesis or something. Answering or, Genesis. Answering yeah, Genesis. Yeah, Genesis. Horse, answering yeah. Genesis is in front of Good looking moment. horses, answering Genesis, yeah. James. I especially had a look at them. I thought Riverland had a very nice looking horse here called Marin yeah. and this horse. But the horse we found is now three off the left in those silks, chasing in a scurry after getting left. Well, here he gets a tap down the shoulder. He runs back in behind them and really just gets a tap down the shoulder. Um, just to show the whip one smack down the, the neck and uh, really, really unlucky. Um, you shouldn't, a horse like this, just he looked like just pure bad luck to get beat. Yeah, that's because, right. pure, uh, pure bad luck. Yeah, and, uh, he's the best horse in the race by a mile. And well, let me tell you, they did, tell. do you yeah. know what, it, what time they did? It's something like um, 50, uh, 45.19 40, yeah. or something. 45.9. 45.9, really. which is a very, very fast time indeed. Yeah. Um, when you consider that the class average is 46.25 and the class record is 45.96. So they broke the class record uh, and this horse did 46.17. He ran a, a fantastic race. Yeah. Um, a very, very unlucky. Uh, I think that he might be quite a nice sprinter, this horse, Magnus. Um, Argentine son of Asiatic boy, have a close look at him in the future. We're going to have a look at uh, Blast from the Past, and uh, let me have a look and see what we've got today. Paddock Stakes. You know, it's always good cape racing, and this will be one for the books. Let's go and have a look at uh, the Paddock Stakes from 1998. Soft falling rain, put it clear. Soft falling rain, won the SA Nursery by three. Racing, racing in the 2000 guineas. It's fly and they're racing in the Godolphin Mile. They're off and racing. Weight didn't matter. Class tells soft falling rain, much too good. Soft falling rain, an impressive guineas winner. Soft falling rain is drawing clear. He's made it seven out of seven by winning here today. But it's soft falling rain who is powering away. We'll see out the mile in style. A high class performer wins the day of Joel Stakes. for Eternal Dancer. Uh, there's the all clear. Gates rope and runners sent on their way with Fields Forever losing a length or two and tucking in quickly. Oculus along the outside gets running first then it's Tainbury in second position. Here's Arabian last then it's Time of My Life is in behind that one. Then we find Eternal Dancer and Kila Lima, London Seasons, in behind that one. One covered on the outside of horses. Then we go back to Wild Aster. Special Key is in behind that. And on the outside, we find Imperial Sue. Then it's Divided Loyalty and Mr. Reed. Behind that, League Title and Fields Forever. Is the trailer must be a good 14, 15 lengths off this leader. And that leader is Oculus to lead it by two, two and a half lengths from in second, Arabian Last. And Tain Breeze on the outside in third. Eternal Dancers in fourth position. Savannah Queen missed last call. She must be four or five lengths off this leader. In behind that one we find London Season. Then it's Time of My Life and one covered on the outside. Then it's Kila Lima. Wild Asters in behind this one must be seven or eight lengths off this leader with Imperious Sue. Then a Special Key. Mr. Reed has a good ten or eleven lengths to find with League Titles. In behind that one and Fields Forever is a trailer. Easily 14, 15 lengths off this leader as they straighten up in the Arkansas Paddock Stakes. Oculus the leader by two lengths from in second. Tainbury in that red cap. Along the inside, Arabian last poised to strike. Then it's Eternal Dancer and Savannah Queen. Just a couple of lengths off this leader. Kila Lima is coming for a rails run as is London season. Time of my life and Fox Fancy along the outside. Then it's Imperial Sue. Arabian last Savannah Queen along the inside. Then it's Time of my life. She's running on nicely. Then it's Kila Lima and Tainbury and Imperial Sue. Savannah Queen overcame a wide draw. Imperial Sue trying to run on in behind that time of my life. But Savannah Queen, a comfortable winner. Very close for second time of my life. In behind that one, Imperial Sue. Wild as Arabian. Savannah Queen winning the Paddock Stakes. The Paddock Stakes is always a fantastic race, isn't it? Tough, tough race, hard race to beat. Very good fillies. As you can see, there was a Met winner in there. There was a Guineas winner in there. Good field of fillies, James. Yeah, KwaZulu Natal, I think, won it. I think Cloda yeah. trained this, didn't she? I think Cloda, 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 yeah. Cloda, yeah. 
uh, Savannah Queen, and she was a very, very good filly indeed. And the second horse, um, Imperial Sue, I think she was trained by David Payne, wasn't David she? David Payne, yeah. Yeah, she, she won the Met. So it shows you, and Ryan Skelton, do you know where he is? Is he, is he was a commentator? Yeah, I don't know where he is today. Maybe he's going to work at Santa Anita, Denman's place. Maybe, maybe he's put in his uh, bid, who yeah. knows? Thrown, mm. a, thrown his hat into the middle for Santa Anita. Well, I don't know, I think that Santa Anita's probably a job that... Um, my voice stands up, I think. I could be very good at being a commentator. <laughs> you've got there. the looks to be a commentator. Yeah, the, the, you've got to, be, got to have looks to got be a looks commentator. Got to have looks to be a commentator, yeah. 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 Clyde Basil's the, Clyde Basil. the exception. The, ex look. <laughs> <laughs> the exception. <laughs> okay, well, let's go, and have a, let's go and have a look at the plum of the week. Same jurisdiction being angled out to Vengeful Angel is coming through on the inside. It's Fear Not that's hit the front with 200 meters left to go in Nora and same jurisdiction on the charge. Fear Not, but same jurisdiction is all over into the closing stages and same jurisdiction out draws clear to win it. Class prevails as same jurisdiction wins it from Fear Not in Nora. Sirens call Eventual Angel. Well, they're very seldom you find a conditions plate with a field like this was in. But same jurisdiction, she's proved that she's a champion. Interbet, 15 to 10, as much as you liked about a filly like this. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't have a very good uh, uh, day, and this was the ninth race on the card. You had to have an Interbet account. You had to get involved. Um, I'm getting involved, a bit involved with the... Um, these type of bets, you know. I, I'm in, in play. I'm using the in play. Yeah. I, I, I went for, uh, I got uh, five to two for the next goal to come from Aston Villa and they equalised, so I won on it. But this, this filly, just touching this filly, James, she's very good. She gave them all weight and thumped them. She is very, very good. And, and I would think that she'd be going for the paddock, paddock stakes. stakes. That's yeah. got to be her, her mission. Inara will go for the but paddock stakes. Would she well. go for the Queen's Plate? A filly like this, she's, she's got great talent. Um, yeah, I suppose she might easily, you know, yeah. to, who knows? Queen's Place looming up, if all these horses, like we heard Michael talk about Noah from Goa, this horse, and I'm talking about the incumbents now and then, there's some, these snakes, big two or three horses, there's some really good horses that could go for the Queen's Plate. Well, the point is it's uh, first week in January, isn't it? Uh, yes, 7th of January, I think it is. And um, you'll be away, you, you're going to Magic Millions, oh, yeah, you've got to sales. Yeah. Magic Millions yeah. sales, yeah. yeah. Big sales. Looking for too. another Harry. Yeah. <laughs> But what a sale. Yeah. Um, but this was certainly a, a stunning performance, and yeah. she's uh, back to her best. Duncan's had a few problems, apparently, with staff, and, uh, you know. This is the cheer him up no end. Thank goodness, um, you know, thank goodness Gavin Smith arrived from PE to come and help my cart boxes. I was very pleased to see oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Gav's yeah. a stilica, you yeah. see. Gav, yeah. Gav, well, Gav came to help his mate, you see. Yes. And that's what I'd like to see. Two water buckets. Carry two water two buckets. Two water <laughs> Go, go, Duncan. Well done. Well done. You had well a winner yesterday as well. And, and as I said, Interbet, that's where you want to be if you want to get on these horses at the best price. Uh, we'll be back in a moment after a bit of racing and we'll be back with uh, uh, current affairs. So let's go and see what they've got on the racetrack. Yes! If you love soccer and you play the Toad, you won't believe what Interbet has to offer you. All the excitement of Toad betting on your computer or your cell phone. It's simple. Choose your teams and your bets, work out what your combinations will cost, see how big the pool is, and place your bets. You can even track your bet live as it happens and get updates on your progress. It's all the fun of the Toad on your phone. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now at www.interbet.co.za and you could be a winner.
Right, welcome to another edition of Current Affairs. We have two uh, great races that we saw down in Cape Town over the weekend. We've got some local news to talk about as well, as well as touching on international news. But let's get straight into what is one of the big races on the calendar. And James, just before I, I touch on this, it was interesting to note, I listened to uh, Stan Ely doing some interviews, and he interviewed uh, Hassan Adams. Yes. It was a wonderful interview, because Hassan Adams had... had uh, told how his daughter had got involved bringing all these orphan children there. And they were up four, five in the morning waiting for their bus. And Burger King laid on all these jumping castles and they ran out of buses because they were just his kids coming and coming and then his daughter got all of Hassan. Hassan got all the mayor, the mayor sent more. So it was a wonderful tribute. But the point I'm trying to make is that Hassan was saying, which is very valid, that the racing people come together and do these things. It's a big industry racing. Yet mining and other big industries, where do they do things like this? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing at all. In I fact, think Hess's speech fact, was very good. Ra uh, racing is one of those sports that um, they say it's an elite sport, but there are the elite of people involved in the yeah. sport. They, 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 you know, the people, and if you look at uh, the people yes. that are involved, they are the elite uh, in, um, in human kindness, in the way they conduct themselves, the way they behave. You just go and have a look at the top echelon of the racing people, whether it be the top trainers, the top uh, jockeys, the owners. top owners, they are all philanthropists. Yeah, and, and James, I, I, I've got uh, first-hand experience that after I, I, I got uh, lymphoma. Yeah. They came they came at the woodwork to support me, and, and, and I can see it. And, and just listening to Hass saying how wonderful it is and how we have trouble with, with government and with gaming boards and things, when we do so much in this massive industry. Yeah. And it, was a, uh, it was a wonderful clip from, from Hassan. I, I just thought it was a fantastic day, and you know, just on Hassan Adams, you've got to take your hat off to yes. the man. You know, I've known him from the old days. Yeah. Okay, when uh, he had a little farm up on the Malmesbury Road. Okay, yeah. so we're, I've I've been mates with Hassan for a very very long, long time, time, and yeah. I, I'm amazed what he's done. But it's a tribute to the man because yes. he's, uh, he's he's tireless. He, he has visions for yeah. racing which are good. He yeah. has uh, uh, he's a philanthropist, as yeah. you say, and he's got his family involved. No, wonderful. Uh, Absolutely. Those kids were so excited, James. Yeah. Well, they deserved the day that they had. I think they yeah. had a fabulous day. And um, it was crowned by uh, a fabulous race. Mm. And um, just, I think we should watch the race and, and then chat about it. Yeah. So let's go and pick them up at the start for the Grand Parade Cape Guineas Group 1. It's always a fantastic race. Gates Fly racing in the Grand Parade Cape Guineas to a good beginning. Silver Mountain on the inside began quickly, pushing forward. We got Hard Day's Night. Budapest is also up there in the firing line in search of the lead. Noah from Goa is sitting on the heels of the early call. Next in running, we find Rodney is also pushing forward. Eighth Wonder is racing four deep into that turn. Then we find Baritone. Silver Mountain is now relegated on the rail to race about eight lengths off the leader. Pushing past her on the outside, we got Victoria's J Illuminator. He's also making ground on the inside side. A length and a half behind that comes ready to attack, being followed by Star Chestnut, then comes Jet Air. A length and a half to NASA. Liege is back, one from last, and Purple Mountain is racing at the end of the line, and they stretched out, I'd say, 16 lengths first to last, as heads turn for home in the Grand Parade, Cape Guineas, and Hard Day's Night will bring the field for home from Budapest in second. Noah from Goa sitting on the inside. Then we find Eighth Wonder 3, Deep Barrett turn on the inside. Next in running comes Illuminator, being followed by Rodney. Purple Mountain is four lengths off that leader with 400 meters left to go. Hard Day's Night is hanging tough. Noah from Goa is the first one to challenge. Here's the yellow colors of Silver Mountain. She's starting a run and she's coming home full of running towards the inside. Baritone is on the rail with 200 meters left to go. Noah from Goa is in front. Up the outside Victoria's J. Silver Mountain has come under a ride. She's still got a length and a half to make up. Noah from Goa is finding more and Noah from Goa wins the guineas. Noah from Goa, then it's tight. NASA was flying with Brazuka. Well, there we go. Noah from Goa. What a, a very good ride by Andy Delpesh and uh, Michael Lecoq. We do speak to Michael Lecoq in your call about this run, James. And, 
as you alluded to, uh, people from the RMG syndicate, they've all found their money back in with Mary and uh, they deserve the success. Yeah, there's uh, just, a, you know, they're, they're people that have been very close to Mike for a very long time and they decided to put it into Mary's colours because they said she was the luckiest. And when you look at the partners, you can see why they wanted to put it into Mary's colours. Yeah. I don't think they win maiden races, the partners. But no, Mary funny enough, they, they, when, you, when you go through them, uh, Herbert's won big races, Mal Her uh, the, the vet Herbert. McVeigh's won big races, Gary Westwater, I know, has won a Group 1 with Dominic Zaki. Yeah. Uh, the equine boys. But Mary's won a lot more groups. Oh, Mary got, Mary's got them cold. <laughs> she bred it, didn't she? Yeah, she this did. One, wasn't it, there wasn't an experience. I remember speaking to Herbert about this horse. And uh, they, 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 they never got the initial price on this horse. They yeah. might not have had this horse to train. And then they came back and they got it. If, if I got my facts right, and uh, they, they, well, they, it's a it's an old firm, you know. It's like yeah. um, the Coolmore bunch of South Africa. This is what they are they like. Are, you yeah. know. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're the team. They have okay. a lot of they have a lot of success. Yeah, the, only well one who, the only one who bolted is uh, Joe Stravina. Yes. Yeah. He left at the wrong time. Yeah, he left at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, listen, if you're with Mark DeCock and Mary and that, you're going to have group one horses throughout yeah. your career. But let's just talk to the other three, James. I want to ask you about the favourite, first of all, Silver Mountain, beaten point nano. Uh, against the boys, a very good effort, James. Uh, is, was it below par, or was, is, is that the level that we're going to expect? Um, my personal feeling is she was very unlucky, and I tip that we find a new pilot for her next time. That's what that would be my tip of the year. Okay, that sure. um, all That's those hands go. And um, I, it's a, it's a okay. big, big offensive tip in my book, but you might be right. I, I'm a big fan of the the young rider, and no, it, I think he's a super rider. But yeah. you'll see what happens in this business. So it's very no, no. I, I hear what, what you're saying. On. The business yeah, is yeah, yeah. But let's let's talk about Brazuca. Now, a second time it's been a runner up in a Group One. Another great race. Absolutely. Um, I, I thought that uh, he was in the right place. He was just on no and goes. Um, um, Hindquarters Hind, yeah. going through the 800 meter mark, the right place. He didn't make the ground on the horse. No, from go went away, and then he came back at the end. He might be better at the Derby distance. This horse he's bred to go that time. Well, Nasser's thrown its hat in. Yeah. Look where that came from. from Nasser, the Derby. Nasser is a really, really nice horse, and his rating 96 looks very low um, at this stage. I would think that uh, he would be certainly up there with him. But then. On the other hand, some of these ratings are pretty high. You know, yeah. when you when you look at uh, the way they rated these horses, I would think that the best best rated horse in this race would be 103, 104. Okay. Uh, I, you know, James, just, uh, the first <coughs> excuse me, the first five were within 1.2 lengths. Victorious Jake made us run with the favourite, the filly, ran a good race. So James, when, when horses run close, they always inclined to say, "Well, it's not a great bunch." Is that could that be accurate? Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, we have a great bunch of uh, three-year-olds, uh, whether they're no exceptional or horse. fillies, uh, except that I, I'd be interested. In, I'm, I'm still in Silver Mountain's camp. On, I think yeah. she's very, very good. I don't think she had what she She, she has four race. weeks now, James, to go into the million-dollar race. Yeah, will she go for the million-dollar race? Well, that was the plan when I was down there for the Phillies yeah. Guineas. You never know how she came out the race, how she's doing. And on she's top not, of that, uh, what's it, seven furlongs, that million-dollar race? Yeah. I would have thought that she I, I, would I, I, I would think she's a shoo-in to go for it and just about a shoo-in to win it. But yeah. I, there are decent horses who came with that sale who are going to take her oh, on. Yeah. So, so, no, but a million dollars, of... James, is, is something you say is not going to come around every year yeah. for, for, for that horse. I mean, Especially when it's won 15 million rand now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and climbing. And climbing. Okay, so. All right, well, let's move on. That was the guineas. And as you say, the Grand Parade Cape Guineas, always a great race and uh, a great pointer to what's going to happen throughout the rest of the year. The best... Let's say one thing. The yes. best four horses ran first, second, third, and fourth. I'm not trying to agree and with that. I, I don't think that there's anything that um, that there were bad luck stories for, and I, I really can't see that. Okay, uh, well, that's true. That time will we'll tell, but I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. They had another group race in the day, the uh, Cape Summer Stairs Handicap. We've got this from about the six, 700 out. Let's go and have a look at this race. And they go with just over 800 meters left to run. Kingston Mines and My Wall, these two dispute the lead. They put two lengths clear over Gothic and a time to kill. A length and a half behind that comes current event. On the outside of Gifted for Glory, two away comes Cold Train and Masterly is going to whip them in as they flood and for the run to the judge. In the Grand West Cape, Summer Stayers handicap with 550 meters left to go. My Wall and Kingston Mines, these two in front. Then comes a time to kill.
who's coming through on the inside for a run. Gothic is coming up the middle. Gifted for Glory's two lengths off them. Tiberod Gold Train, current event taking off together into the final 250. Kingston Mines is finding more. My World on the inside is trying to come again. Up the outside, we got current event and Gold Train deeper out. Kingston Mines, current event is closing ground quickly into the closing stages. And current event takes the lead close to home. Current event beats Kingston Mines. Cold Train and My World. Well, there we go. Current event by Go Deputy James. Go Deputy throws the big horses every now and then. He's done very, very well, especially over a bit of ground. Yeah. You know, they, this is out of an Eliador man, a good man too. And it was cheap. It was of only a 50 grand horse from Lummis Craft. Um, he's owned by um, Eric Braun and uh, Paul Looms. Uh, yeah. Successful, boys. Yeah. Successful. Yeah. So, you know, nice to see them win and win for the Snakes. It was a big price. I thought Kamala rode a cracking good race on this horse. And um, the, the stayers look weak. You know, when mm. Kingston Mines is running second and Coltrane's not a bad horse, uh, they, they didn't even get close in the Gold Cup, these horses. So, you know, the, yeah. the problem is, is that we're still breeding more and more and more for speed horses in this country. And uh, we're very, getting like the Australians. You know, that's the way we're going, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but we've got good some way. good stayers. We've got some good trainers of stayers. But James, before we move on there, I was looking through the archives the other day, and I found some footage of you, which I hope you don't mind me showing. Yeah, uh, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it comes under the No Option Act. Oh, is that so? Yeah, and I asked Raymond to download it, Raymond Spielberg. Didn't, didn't send, send me a disclaimer. So, well, no, it was signed by someone. I don't know if it was you or not. But let, this is some footage we found of the legendary Jimbo Goodman many years ago. Computer form sprint grade one, wait for age down the thousand meters straight here at Gosforth Park. And uh, the favorite Tommy Hotspur looked absolute picture in the parade ring and in the canter pass. This is the battle of the speed merchants. Here we go. Natal, KwaZulu Natal have bought up the best they can bring to bands here, young harvests here. They're going to have a go at Tommy Hotspur. And on what I saw, they're going to have to be able to run. I told Derek Martin already that uh, he's going to have to pick up his feet. Shushak looked absolutely superb. Um, he's a rising uh, four-year-old star from the town of Shudanzik, bred by uh, George Kahan down at the Alchemy, and uh, Trevor Lang trains him for Derek Martin. Doug White gets a ride on him. He's unbeaten his last seven. He looks absolutely superb in the canter pass, but he's going to have to go to beat Tommy. Uh, Tommy looked great. Taban, well, he's the champion sprinter, joint champion sprinter with Flow By You. Unfortunately, we haven't got fly, Flow By You here today, and he's got to have a huge chance. Now, Young Harvest from the Ricky Mangard stable, drawn two. Andrew Fortune gets a ride, likes it a bit wet. He's got to have a chance as well. He just got beat by Tracy's Element last year, and he's going to have a big shot in this finish, I would think, today. But the horse that really struck me in the canter pass that might be a nice little outsider for you, just to a Joey from the Buddy Maroon stable. Anton Marcus gets the ride, drawn on the outside. Be careful of this one. Don't leave it out of anything. Lady Lexington also looked very well from the Roy Magnus stable. She ran in the money last year, and she's here to in avenge second. her. Second. In behind that now, just do it, Joey. Shushak is tracking Tommy Hotspur, the pink sleeves in front there. In behind them is Taban now with 300 to go. How much left has Tommy Hotspur got now? He's the leader of length. Shushak trying to put the pressure on Flashy Song. Taban's running on Young Harvest on the inside. Tommy Hotspur, 180 to go. Could be in trouble because Shushak is getting him with every stride. Young Harvest Harvest down the inside, Tommy Hotspur and Shushak, Young Harvest, but Shushak gets to the front, and Shushak is a great horse, he's beaten Tommy Hotspur in the computer form sprint, Shushak got Tommy Hotspur who tried to go from pillar to post, but Shushak unbeaten in his last seven, will keep the winning trend going, unfortunate for Tommy Hotspur. Dougie, all great races are one to plan, and you obviously had a plan there. Yeah, I did. You know, obviously it was going to be difficult to beat Tommy Hotspur. He's been all the rage. Um, he must be the quickest horse around at the moment. But the only way to beat him was to try and get a, as good a break as I possibly can without uh, using my horse up too much. And hopefully, you know, tackle him early so that, uh, that, I'd, that he'd be able to fight on. And I've, been, I've studied his races, you know. He gets away from them and they, they all challenge him, sort of, they let him get away. And uh, when they come at him, the race is over. So I wanted to keep as close as possible and, and, and try and tackle him early on, which... which played uh, right, right into my hands and, uh, and it worked.
Well, you know, you guys have said all along, you KwaZulu Natal boys have said all along, this is the greatest. You've been involved with this horse. Uh, this, this, this really was some type of race. It must have been one of the fastest times we've ever seen. I think it probably will be, yes. Um, geez, that, that horse really is like lightning. But, uh, you know, I had, him, I had him in my sight all the way. And uh, when I pushed the button, it was there. And, uh, and the result showed. I think you wrote a great race. Well done. Where are the connections? Just Derek Martin. Derek. Trevor. Uh, the connections are over the moon now. I've got to have Derek Martin here. I've got to have my computer form. Derek, I'm going to eat my computer form. No, I think you'll have to. <laughs> Thanks for challenging us anyway. Congratulations. I'll tell Thanks. you what, you guys are sportsmen. Trevor, come stand here next door to Derek. You guys are sportsmen. You took up the challenge. You said you'd give us one. And really, what a racehorse this is. Great. Um, thrilled to the run. I'm ecstatic. You've had a lot of decent horses in your life, but this must be one of the biggest moments ever. I said to Graham earlier that uh, I've had some good horses. Combrine's a good one. St. Eugene was a good one. But this was the best I've ever owned. I've got, to talk to your, I've got to talk to your trainer, Trevor. You gave up. You were one of the top boys around. You rode a tremendous amount of winners for the JF Kutsia stable and that. You gave up. You went stiping. You came back for Derek Martin. This has got to be the best career move you ever made in your life. Oh, without a doubt, James. Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, to, to, to do what this horse has done for us, I mean, it's just been, uh, it's, a, it's one of those things, you know, to, to build up, to pull off a thing like this. I said to him from the first time he ran, we're going to Joburg, we're going for the computer sprint, and maybe too sharp for him. But if he doesn't win that, then he'll definitely win the, the now Mondi sprint. You know, he's much better suited over 1,200. And here we are. Well, you and know, you said, you said to me after I challenged you guys on television, you said to me, you rang me up and you said, I'm coming for you, I'm looking for you. And I think that that's great. The sportsmanship is what it's all about. And you know, all I can say, you prepared this horse to the minute. I haven't seen a horse as well prepared. I didn't think you'd be able to beat Tommy Otspur, but you guys had a plan and it was perfect. Absolutely. It, uh, like I say, the best thing about it is that when you, you put a plan together and, and it comes off. Monday Sprint, you bring him back again in a month's time? He's not going home. He's been here since the 28th of January and he's staying until well, the Monday Sprint. Well, you've had a day today. You're the first one you pulled out. That arrived and this one arrived. And the Monday Sprint's going to be, uh, we won't see flow by you in that race either, will we? So you should be able to have that at your mercy. Oh, well, there's never anything at your mercy. I mean, you know, today with uh, Tommy Hotspur, it was his mercy, but you know, it, We'll be at the finish, we'll be there, sure. Monday Sprint is, is up his, more up his street than... Right, there we go. Now, Jim, this was famous quote that you'll eat your computer form if Tommy Hosser gets beat by Shushak. It was the worst tasting computer form <laughs> I've ever eaten in my life. I eat a few computer forms, but what I realise now, okay, yeah. in that even... I, I could stop cranes, no one could stop Tom, Tommy Hotspur except me. Well, you I man. stopped Tommy Hotspur, can you believe yeah. it? Good I, luck to I, I had a t-shirt made, I was presenting in Durban, Mac, uh, Durban. Max McConnell got me a t-shirt that yeah. said there, Tommy Hospital Shushak, and I wore it on the air the day before. Yeah. And boom, King Derek Martin said, nah, come and get the money, left this will win. It was a great race. Uh, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And you know, um, it just brings back great memories of yeah. to how we used to do this. You're a good looking boy, water. James. And what's changed? And what now? Do you know what my mother would not be happy? You're a good-looking man you now. You're good-looking man. You like a good one, James. I, I actually, the, the, the hair was the thing that really got oh, me. Oh, that was the era. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. the era. Yeah. And yeah. a no, beautiful no. suit. And, yeah. and that's how you present, James. You should still be presenting. Yeah. You let the jockey talk. No, no, you let no, the no. owners talk. Yeah, listen. Wonderful I, to watch you, James. I know I'm, I'm blowing smoke, but <laughs> uh, I wanted to see you eat your own computer for me. <laughs> it, it, was, it was very, it, it's amazing how, you know, you look back and you say to yourself, well, you know, how were these things? And I, I wouldn't have believed that you had that footage. And it's um, courtesy of King I, and Brent. Well, thanks to those guys. But, uh, you know, you've got to bring up quite a sore point. I did tip <laughs> a few other winners. I, I actually said they all looked, he did yeah. look fantastic. Trevor Lang, you know, a great friend of ours. Yeah, of and he um, he's, yeah. um, you know, involved with Lucky. Lucky's Lucky doing wonderfully yeah, well. With Jane, unlucky. just before we close here, just want to touch the, the, in Victoria and Australia, they called off a meeting. And yeah. we're getting used to this here. Yeah, well, it wasn't because there was marks on the track or anything. 41 degrees was the temperature. They called off the whole of Victorian racing over the weekend. 41 degrees. A couple of other things um, that there were. Uh, Serena Williams. This is the thing that gets me. Serena Williams beat American Farah. The readers picked American Farah. And Sports Illustrated, I'm um, never buying any Sports Illustrated again, except the swimwear issue. Swimwear issue. Yeah, swim, <laughs> swimwear issue I'll buy, okay. <laughs> no more Sports Illustrated for me. How can you pick Serena Williams? She never even won a Grand Slam event. You got my no vote, Sports yeah. Illustrated. 
Anything else? Uh, yeah, uh, racing on Wednesday has been moved to Gravel until they can sort out the track upstairs at Scottsville. So bear that in mind. And, and one other thing, James, uh, I see Ralph Beckett and, and, and uh, who's it, Hugo Palmer yeah. have, have been given horses for Judmont International. Yeah, they, they're joining uh, Sir Michael Start and John Gosden. Uh, there are a whole bunch of. Are, are there any, there. any left for, uh, with Lady Sister? She gave up. Her lady no, she's sister. given up. She's yeah. given up. She's yeah. packed in. Okay. Just a well, word of as a note of sadness, and um, we wish her well in her future. Is Marge Engelbrecht from the TBA? She's been there for very, very many years. Marge is one been, of my favourites. She's been fantastic, and you know the TBA right. they, they, they run the slot, and um, uh, I'm not sure that she retired. She took an early pension or whatever, but. She was. She helped more people in trouble with money than anyone of Everyone loved she Marge. Was fantastic, Marge, fantastic, yeah. wonderful lady. So we wish you well, Marge, in your travels and where you go. And just remember that um, you're a very, very kind person. Thank you. Right. Uh, we will be back uh, with your call. As we said earlier, it's with Michael de Kock from Dubai. Right, Magic Millions, uh, big time coming up for them. But firstly, they had his legacy won uh, here at, uh, in South Africa. They won a turf and team. And this is a very interesting horse. Uh, and uh, Paul Lafferty picked this horse out of the cells. We bought it over here together. Um, he's by Taylor the Cat out of a mare called Regarded. He had one leg that turned out a little bit. But geez, was he a nice horse. Well, he's won two in a row. He absolutely doddled in first time out. Yeah, unbeaten, Paul's chirping, but he hasn't got a mic on, so it doesn't matter. He's unbeaten two from two, this horse. And um, he was bought at the Magic Billion sale by us, uh, his legacy. Keep an eye on this horse. We think that he might be quite good. Uh, Jeff Woodruff trains him and uh, just shows you. Very, very cheap little uh, weanling that we bought out here. So um, that was the start, or one of the starts of this quite a flourishing weanling career. But if you're looking for a yearling, You've got to be going to Magic Millions. You've got to make up your mind pretty soon because the 6th to the 10th is a big Magic Million sale at the Gold Coast. This is their main sale. You don't want to miss it. All the big boys will be there. And um, we look forward to uh, seeing all of you after Christmas. We hope you have a very good Christmas. But before that, we're going to have a wonderful interview with Mike the Cock. Starter has the butt, pushes it. Right approach, brought up 1,000 metres. But Grand Emporium in front, too good. Asiatic boy wins the UAE Triple Crown. Look at that. It's Sun Classic, it's another one for South Africa. Musa takes the lead from Rehana. Soft, falling rain has won the Godolphin Mile. Shay Shay takes the lead. Shay Shay wins the Elgo Sprint. Victory Moon, Mark comes again, Victory Moon, Ippy Tombe takes the lead and wins two seconds for the Dubai duty free Ippy Tombe the winner. Well on the line as promised to you guys, uh, we've got Mike de Kock all the way from Dubai and Paul and I are here to listen to some uh, pearls of wisdom. It's this time of the year again Mike, nice to have you with us. Pleasure James, thanks very much. 
Uh, at least I we can hear you clearly now, Mark, and thanks very much for giving your time to talk to yeah, the country. Pretty, they're pretty bad get to the bar. <laughs> I don't know why. You've got to pay your cell phone account. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to pay your account that time too. <laughs> well, gold circle battling now, you know, things are not going so good. But uh, uh, you settled in there. I saw you had a couple of sighters the other day, but um, they didn't run too well. But what's it look like? Um, yeah, Jones, I'm much happier this year with the horses, um, the travelling, or well, certainly the horses that travel um, are a lot fitter and in better condition than last year, so we're hoping for the best. You've got, a, you've got an interesting new team, and can we start off with, um, ob obviously, Mub Tahish, who, um, you know, set the world alight and really uh, took you to a, new, a whole new sort of era of your training career. Yeah, he's doing very well. Very happy with him. Um, he's been here for a while now. Settled in nicely. Um, I'm not going to start him early. He'll start uh, in the five-back stakes in February, matching challenge in March, and then on to World Cup. Yeah, so the World Cup would be his main main mission. Yes, definitely. And and has he done well? Because he, he really had a very hard campaign last year. Yeah, James, he actually, uh, you know, he ran in five legs of two tri triple crowns. I don't believe I've ever read or heard of a horse that's ever done that anywhere in the world. And he quitted himself very well after, you know, winning winning one derby and I think mean, he was beaten nine lengths by American Ferrer and the next time about seven lengths. So, um, well, I think he did very, very well. He, he certainly did well when you, when you consider that he was uh, rated in the top 20 thoroughbreds in uh, the world last year at one stage. That's a uh, phenomenal feat. Yeah, I think he was rated in the top 10 um, sand horses as well. Well done. Let's hope that he can win the World Cup for you because I know that's something that you'd really like to do. But now, the other two that I'd like to ask you about are two that you got from, um, from the Coolmore bunch. You got Winkleman and uh, another one. I saw that um, you had two of them. Winkleman was actually bought by Larry Nestat in training in um, France, on the sale in France. Um, he actually raced in Italy. To be honest, I really know nothing about his form, um, so I can't I can't tell you much about that form. I know he's rated 101, um, but you know it's an Italian rating, so I mean we'll have to see if he so, 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 if it stands up. Yeah. So you probably race race him in a 95 to 105 merit rating somewhere there to start off with. Yeah, he'll be he'll be going into handicaps, but I mean at the end of the day, the Italian ratings are probably a little lower. Uh, and then the rest of one, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to see how the form works out. I mean, he's a nice type of horse, but, um, you know, you'd only have to see whether the form is good enough. You Mike, that, that was racing, really. Yeah, the other horse that I was interested in was a horse called Eisenhower. That was the horse from the Coolmore team, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that's a Coolmore team horse. Um, he's not a bad horse, reasonable form, but, you know, another cripple, another headache, another one we have to get right and nurse through. And so, at this stage, I'm making no predictions. Uh, Mark, it's Laugh again. Just to, I'm uh, looking through the list of horses you've got there. Now, just for the, the, the general public out there, there's no marge move because the policy is three or fillies go to stud for that uh, owner. Is that true? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so for those of you looking for marge move, she's gone to stud. Well, Michael, how, how about these South African horses you've taken over? How are they doing? They're all doing well. That's travelled well. Um, no complaints. Um, a lot better than last year's travelling. You know, last year we, we couldn't exercise at all. Yeah. This year we could exercise. A horse I wanted to ask you about, Mark, is, is, is the, the ex Mark Azzi horse, Pylon. He was always a very good dirt horse. How's he done? Yeah, he's doing well. He's on target to run in the first two or three meetings. Um, uh, run very well this year. Uh, that, that's, that's fantastic. But a year older, yeah? Not easy, yet. Not No, easy. sure. Of course, it's, it's always tough there. But there's some very nicely uh, bred horses you've got as well, Mark, and some that have done well here too. Yes, yeah, so we're lucky to have some nice horses and, uh, you know, people that can spend the money to buy them. And, um, well, apart from the fact that, you know, got a good team um, yeah. selecting them and finding them. I mean, it's all good and well having the money. I've seen a lot of people with a lot of money buy nothing. You've got to have um, people around you that, um, that can assist you in, uh, in making the right choices. Absolutely. No, it looks a very strong hand again. Mike, you've... you've um you know, year after year, you step out the goods. It always looks difficult. A couple of other horses. Prayer for Relief. I don't know him. Prayer for Relief. Um, X Dale Roman. He ran in the, uh, in the Godolphin Mile last year and then stayed with me. 
Um, I've had him in England. He was pretty unsound. Then he's he's come. He's doing well. He's probably he, the the chaps that own um, American Ferro own him. Zayat family. So uh, Ahmed Zayat and Justin Zayat they own the horse. Um, he's going to run. I'm hoping the first meeting in the next two challenge. He's doing nicely. I mean, he's a bit long in the tooth, but he's, he's doing quite well. Yeah, I, he was a beautiful looking horse, and I do remember the horse that, um, um, that Dale Roman sent him to you, um, showed the measure of his confidence, sent him to you for the World Cup. You got him ready for the race, didn't you? You spent a week with him. Well, no, no, he only actually came sort of a week before, James. So yeah. Was basically him. But he, he, you know, he had a few problems and, and set back in that time, so he's a lot better than that, that run suggests, I believe. All right, now, a horse called Val Dory, who's an Argentine horse. I've never seen him before, I don't think. It's a filly. Um, she's an Asiatic boy filly that was um, Shrek Mama bought in Argentine. I don't know a lot about her. I have nothing to do with selling in laws. Um, she seems okay. She's she's um, obviously Asiatic boy, so we're hoping dirt, you know, for those fillies races because they they can come up quite weak as fillies races. Just talk, talking about the Argentine, you must have seen the horse that um, just won the Pellegrini in Argentina. Do you know anything about him? You know, he must be some type of fantastic horse. Of, he's by pure prize, well, I think. Yeah, I, I don't really know a lot about him. I know he's by the same side of Press Relief, um, who seems to be doing quite well there um, But I don't really know a lot about him. Um, now, some of the old favourites, Banadir, Sanchawis, those type of horses, how are they going? Yeah, well, I... You know, Bennett, yes, hardly an old favourite. He's, you know, he was here last year. He was three. Mm. Um, as a sprinter, this year he's four. I think he's doing very, really, very really well. Uh, a lot different to last year. He hopefully gets a run in the first meeting as well. Um, I'm, very, I'm very happy with him. He's, a, you know, a lot different horse. I took him to England this year. I didn't race him at all. He just really um, uh, kept him going there, you know, in, 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 for the carnival and um, brought him back here and got him to really, you know. Mark, uh, another horse I'd like to ask you about, because obviously the South African connection is Talina for uh, young Terry. How's that doing? Yes. Yeah, he's, Talina's here now as well. Um, he's doing well. I mean, he's, he's obviously also, you know, an older horse, and uh, he's got a couple of couple of issues. But, he's, you know, at this stage of the game, we put no pressure on him, so he's pretty sound and moving well. Um, you know, we'll see when the pressure comes. Okay, now that, that's great, Mark, because I know the surf because we're looking at But I'm just looking through the list here. And another and one I want to touch on is, is Rock Cocktail. He was within the length of the best three-year-olds of his year. How's he doing? Yes, he's doing well as well. He's, you know, as I say, last year, no, no, no go at all. But, I mean, this year, a lot better. I mean, I'm hoping that he'll win in the carnival. He's, um, he's a very nice horse. Yeah. Uh, Mike, a couple of others, obviously, here. D Darwin, um, he's another imported horse. Yeah, he's got too many problems, James. He's also bleeds. He's got a bad throat. Um, I mean, we're having another go with him this year, but I'm, I'm not holding my breath as to how well he'll be. Um, Tanoff, he's another one that we's on the um, list here. Tanoff is a, is a very nice horse. I'm expecting him to have a good carnival. I'm, in fact, taking him to Qatar on the 50th. Uh, we're racing Qatar for $500,000. Qatar Derby. <laughs> He's spreading a crack at that. <laughs> you're spreading your wings far and wide. Qatar, now you're attacking. They're gonna, there's gonna be, they're gonna be a, something out for you. You know, so these guys don't like you coming all over the world. Uh, I've been back in Qatar before. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem there was getting settled. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have they got liquor laws in Qatar? Or can you drink? No, I think it's pretty much the same as here. Okay. Um, They've, you know, I mean, you've seen in, uh, you've seen them uh, racing a lot now in, in England. And yes, of course. They, they're, you know, they're pretty much sort of going the Mac Toon way. You know, they're, they're really sort of spending, they're really spending a lot of money into the game. And they're having this, they're having a couple of big meetings over there now with a lot of money. So yeah, you've got to go. Okay. Yeah, go. And on top of that, you know, you can always get settled in uh, barrels of oil if you need. You know, that will that will help this country at the exchange. Well, I think right? they're they guests, aren't they? They're guests, they're guests, yeah. They love the guests. The guests, boys. Yeah. Mike, t um, who are you going to be using to ride these horses this year? Because um, you know, obviously, no, Pikey. Pa the Pikey's uh, the the main Pikey's uh, now got a big Pikey's job in married, England. He's married to William Haggis now, so yeah. he's going to be there for the for the for the winter. Uh, he doesn't want to come back to Dubai anymore. Yeah. Doesn't like the stewards, yeah. <laughs> so, Don't flame um, him. 
<laughs> Jim Yon will probably, you know, he'll be riding most of the horses. And I'm using Wayne Smith, um, I think, to mean fame a bit as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, what about uh, that uh, other pikey, Pat Dobbs? I thought he was, uh, you know, sort Dobbs of... Is, uh, no, he's quite involved there with um, Doug Watson, who's, you know, he does very well there. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, that's uh, good, Mike. So, so, so the first c carnival meeting is, what, a couple of weeks' time? 7th of January, yeah, the first week of January. 7th of January. And what, what are we looking forward to there, Mike? And what, what chances? Ben Adair, Ben Adair. Um, ben Adair. I, I think I'll have, yeah, Ben Adair will run. Um, Prayer for Relief probably run. Pylon possibly. Um, could be one or two other turf horses. St. Shawis might run. I think that's probably good. I mean, Benadier is basically a meeting. Oh, if he runs the first meeting, otherwise he'll run the second meeting, he'll be the ones to watch, I suppose. Well, Atomic Rush is another one. He won't be ready the first meeting, but the second or third meeting is another horse from South Africa that's doing quite well. Mike, it's absolutely fantastic having you there again, flying the flag for us. And, um, you know, as usual and as always, we wish you the best of. Um, the best of British give them. Uh, we've seen that actually. Just talking about British, there's a big team of horses coming over here from from Europe, and uh, they've got horses from all types of places: Denmark, um, Qatar, KSA, uh, South it's Korea. You know, uh, Sweden. It's a carnival. So, yeah, it's for, it's the, a carnival, for yeah. the carnival. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually haven't really seen it. It's it's an amazing um, list of people. Even three Americans have decided to pull in. California Chrome will probably arrive with the Cowboys. Yes. Yeah. So we. Yeah. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it's the Olympics. Yeah. Well, let's let's give them one in our home ground. You know, yeah. we've got a couple of months, and uh, you know, we're the whole of the South Africa, as you know, is always pulling for you. Um, just by the by, fantastic job with um, Noah from Goa on on Saturday. You must have been thrilled. Yeah, thanks, James. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a, you know, he's a really nice, solid horse. And, um, uh, you know, I, I felt we had to have a go because I'm not so sure that the three-year-olds are what everyone makes them out to be this season. Um, you know, and they were getting quite, you know, I mean, a filly, the, the filly of Mike's. I mean, she, for me, if she beat the Colts, then you can start making comparisons to Empress Plus yes. and all the other fancy names. But... Um, until then, you can't, you know. Uh, yeah. I think we, we seem to forget very quickly. And I mean, if I look back on last year, you look at the three-year-olds last year, same, same jurisdiction, Arabian, uh, Alboran C, Majmu, Carry On, Alice. I don't see them this year. Yeah. I don't see horses of that sort of caliber. You know? no, so, you're right, Mark. Um, you're absolutely I, right. I think this, uh, Harry's son is another one. You know, I, I just don't see them this year. And I think um, this is... I might be proven to be wrong. I think this crop is not as not as strong as last year's crop. Mm. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be, you know, I mean, Noah from Gaza is a very, very good horse, but, it, you know, you wouldn't put him up there with the real greats. I mean, he's a real solid, honest, hard-knocking horse yeah. and good. But, you know, to, 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 to make comparisons to some of the greats in past, even, you know, so that's why I'm actually quite keen to run him in the Queen's Plate, just to see where, where the three-year-olds are with our older horses. Good idea. Let's run in there, Mark. Take them on. Take them on. Well, we've got to find out, you know, at the end of the day, left. You, yeah. you can't fear defeat. I mean, it's nice to find out how good the, how, how good the crops are, you know. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's fantastic for that team as well. You know, I know that they were mainly the RMG syndicate, weren't they? Those boys that um, uh, and girls that got yes. involved there. Yeah. We owned a lot of bad ones, James, but we've had one or two good <laughs> ones. Still going, and this one, you know, takes up with us. Don't you forget about those bad ones. Let me tell you. But, uh, you know, every, every year the boys have put their money down and, and uh, kept on coming back and taking it on the turn. So it's not out of, out of turn for them. And it's really nice to have a real good, you know, a nice one like... Um, no, from Goa, you know, you win the Dingons, you win the Guineas. Yeah. Uh, you've had a bit of fun out there. Well, they they soldiers, that team. And, you know, they're the, the best people in racing. So we couldn't have been more happy for them. And um, I must say, uh, Matthew and the boys seem to do a good job. You've got a young guy, Maestri, there. He looked like he was pretty excited. He must have had his tenor on it. <laughs> Yeah, he's been happy for, for yeah. a week or so. He probably had his next one. Listen, I know it's tough for you. Over Christmas, New Year, you're sitting there getting horses ready for us, and basically for us in South Africa. But, you know, we'll chat to you after the New Year. You just have a good one and um, enjoy every moment of it. And uh, plain sailing, we hope it goes well. Cheers, James. Thanks very much.
Mike Tocock on the line from Dubai. Thanks so much to him for joining us here on Winning Ways. And as always, he just gives it all to us. We are, you know? we are so fortunate. You know, I don't know of any other country that can phone up and say, we've got our leading trainer, a legend on the phone. He's going to tell us all about his horsing, tell us where they're racing, and give us their chances. It's just Mike Tocock. Yeah, raise your hat to the man. Well, uh, you know, it's like... There are horses. Yeah, you know, it yeah. doesn't matter where they come from, Ireland, or they come from the there USA, or horses. wherever they are. There are horses. They're South African horses. Uh, we all fly the South African flag, and obviously, every year we go over there and support the team. And, you know, if you want to start getting thinking of going over, you've got to start planning now, because the Dubai World Cup this year, as you've heard, Mubtahej California Chrome. Can you imagine, Can you imagine that race? That? You know? What a race. And those and, are just two. Those are just two. And, and those are just two. And then all the other horses that Mike's chatting about and getting them involved. I went last year, I was fortunate to go with uh, Phil Georgia and his crowd. I'd never been they, with they, them. The tickets, I can't believe it. The it's interest is, is very big fabulous. this year. Obviously, we've got an interest having a couple of runners there this yeah. year ourselves. But I was speaking to Phil the other day. He said people are just phoning up now. Because, as you say, you talk about the Muktahijas and, and the horses. Like that. They're world class. And, and you got Harry's son there. He's, uh, we, we, he gets there in a couple of weeks. He, he gets there on the 30th. Him yeah. and uh, Royal, Royal Navy ship. Yeah. He's, he's a, a warfront uh, horse we got for, out of Coolmore as well. They're both doing exceptionally well. They galloped at Epsom. They galloped uh, a full hard gallop at Epsom on, uh, on Sunday, yesterday. So all things going well. We ship out and go and take our chances because Harry's a very good horse. The other horse seems to be doing well, but it's just a great carnival. Sure, and it's a great experience for you. Wonderful yeah. to have you out there flying the South African flag. It's a huge, huge move to go and do this. And uh, we wish Paul the best as well. And uh, to all of you out there that uh, are going to have a, a festive season, remember, back fast horses, don't drink too much, don't mess around with someone else's uh, property, and you'll end up having a reasonable Christmas and you might get a few presents. We wish you the very best. Starter has the butt, pushes it. Right approach, brought up to 1,000 metres. But Grand Emporium in front, too good. Asiatic boy wins the UAE Triple Crown. Look at that. It's Sun Classic. It's another one for South Africa. Musa takes the lead from Rehana. Soft, falling rain has won the Godolphin Mile. Shay Shay takes the lead. Shay Shay wins the Elgo Sprint. Moon that comes again. Victory Moon. Ipe Tambe takes the lead and wins two seconds for the Dubai duty free. Ipe Tambe the winner.